This is Damian McNamara with Global Medical News Network, and I'm here today with Dr. Norman Walmark of Allegheny General Hospital in Pennsylvania, and we're at the annual meeting of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. You just uh, presented some information about a three-year follow-up trial in more than 2,000 patients with colon cancer, and you were comparing a group that was treated with adjuvant bevacizumab compared to a control group that just got chemotherapy. And you found that the disease-free survival endpoint, which was your primary outcome, was not significantly different in three years. Can you tell me if you were surprised by this outcome? We were certainly disappointed. We were hoping that a uh, novel, uh, interesting, exciting reagent such as bevacizumab, which is a humanized monoclonal antibody that targets VEGF, that was shown to prolong survival in advanced disease when transposed into the uh, adjuvant setting for early uh, colon cancer stage 2s and 3s uh, would result in a robust disease-free survival benefit and ultimately lead to an increased rate of cure for our patients with early stage colon cancer. Alas, that was not the case. The, the positive uh, aspects to this trial, I mean the silver lining, I would say that you know we failed but we failed with distinction. Uh, is that we learned a great deal more about how to use bevacizumab uh, to optimal efficacy. And that what we saw is that the, during the uh, interval that bevacizumab was given, the, the one year, and as you so appropriately noted, six months beyond the chemotherapy, uh, we saw a robust effect. We saw a hazard ratio of 0.6 which translates to 40% reduction in event rate while the bevacizumab was given. What kind of toxicities did you see with bevacizumab in the trial and would that be an issue over, you know, if it were to become a maintenance therapy as in, in the adjuvant setting? Yeah, well, it, it's, you know, it's something that can't be dismissed, obviously. Having said that, uh, because this is the adjuvant setting where the primary is resected, uh, it, it was, it, the bevacizumab, was remarkably well tolerated. Carmen Allegra presented the uh, toxicity data from this trial a year ago at ASCO, and it's available online, uh, JCO, as of uh, May 4th. And uh, remarkably, uh, it was very well tolerated. We had 12% incidence of uh, of uh, grade three uh, hypertension, uh, we had uh, about 11 percent compared to 6 percent. Uh, with pain, we had uh, proteinuria. We had uh, we had some uh, wound issues that uh, that were not uh, you know particularly uh, serious. Uh, so all in all, uh, it was well tolerated. We did not see an excess of uh, of perforations with uh, bevacizumab of hollow viscera. Uh, we did not see, uh, you know, vascular thrombotic events uh, in excess of that. So in the adjuvant setting, it seemed to be very well tolerated at the dose that we utilized, which was five milligrams per kilo. Now I've heard uh, estimates of 80,000 a year, 90,000 a year. Is that in the ballpark, you think? Or? Well, certainly right now it is. Okay. I mean, if it were to become uh, used in, uh, in a prolonged or, or even a chronic fashion, uh, I'm sure that this uh, this would uh, would be factored into into the cost. So, could you see this at some point being used more than a year or more than two years, kind of as a maintenance therapy for these patients with colon cancer? Well, our our hope is that uh, the next NSABP uh, trial would uh, assess bevacizumab for longer durations, and uh, we haven't uh, finalized uh, what that. Uh, duration would be, but certainly, uh, you know, we're thinking in terms of two years. And of course, we raise uh, the appropriate question as to whether bevacizumab uh, should be used, uh, you know, as a chronic intervention. This is Damian McNamara with the Global Medical News Network.